Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today I will be continuing to read Black Panther, The Young Prince. So let's continue. Chapter 4 Over the next few days, T'Challa had a lot to do. He not only had to pack all his clothes, what did the kids wear in America? But he also had to finish his classes with his tutors. Being the son of the king meant that all his lessons were given privately in the royal palace. There was also the duties that came with being a prince. These were his least favorite, but there was no getting around them. Matters of state, his father called them. Often when his father had visitors, T'Challa had to put on formal clothes and stand by his father's side, as if he too were, in, were deciding important issues. This was not true, of course. It was only a display of unity on behalf of the royal family. Mabaku often rib ribbed him for all the praise and attention he received for just doing nothing. Prince Lucky, he called him. T'Challa usually brushed it off, but sometimes it really grated him. The news spread quickly through Wakanda that their prince was going away. His father called it a journey of discovery and said that his son would be traveling abroad to learn about the greater world. It seemed to T'Challa that the king didn't even know what it didn't even want his own people to know his true whereabouts. How dangerous was this threat he had spoken of? He would have to ask before he left America before he left for America. America. He was reminded once again of the strangeness of it all. He just hoped that he and M'Baku would be able to fit in. The next, the day before the celebration, T'Challa and M'Baku took a walk through the city center. Pre preparations were underway. Open air pavilions, pa pavilions, were being set up and T'Challa marveled at the Wakandan artistry on display. Some structures were made from material that looked as thin as paper, but curved and folded into elaborate shapes. Some bore wide ribbons, and red and yellow clo cloth formed into house-like structures and adorned at the, top of w at the top with great capstones. But the one that took his breath away was a pyramid that looked to be made of glass, sparkling in the sun. This is all for you, my friend, M'Baku said, waving his hand in the air. Well, you too, T'Challa countered. It's for both of us. M'Baku frowned. Right, keep telling yourself that. T'Challa shook his head. Your father is a high-ranking military official, a close advisor to the king. Your well-being is just as important as mine. M'Baku nodded along, and then his eyes brightened. Hey, I have an idea. Maybe when we get to America, I'll be the prince and you can be the pauper. Very funny, countered T'Challa. You're a real joker. That night, T'Challa met his father at the palace to learn more about his trip. He entered the throne room as another man was leaving. He was a he was clean shaven and massive, with arms as big as trees as tree trunks. He nodded respectfully at T'Challa and left the room. T'Challa listened to the man's footsteps footsteps as they faded down the hall. After waiting another moment, he flopped into one of the many chairs and stretched his legs out in front of him. He rubbed his forehead. Tired? his father asked. T'Challa looked up. Not really, just wondering what it'll be like in Chicago. He shifted in his seat. Why did you choose it? Why not New York or another city? The Black Panther rattled his chain in his hand. I spent time there when I was a young man, studying and learning about the people about the world outside of Wakanda. I found the people there down to earth and honest. I think you will too. I really want to see New York one day, T'Challa said, 
His father nodded. Chicago is cold, T'Challa said, but New York can be even colder if one does not find his or her way. I'm sure you'll do well in the Windy City. Plus, the African Embassy of Nations knows who we are and is making accommodations as we speak. You'll be in good hands. But what about this threat? T'Challa challenged him. I should be here, by your side, in case of war. The son's duty is to obey his father, the king said. What about Hunter? T'Challa persisted. He's staying. Why can't... Hunter is not in line for the throne. He doesn't carry the blood of the panther tribe. You know this, T'Challa. T'Challa studied his feet. When the fight starts, I'll be here by father's side, not running off to hide in America. You have a different destiny, my son, the king declared. It will do you some good to be away. If you're ever going to lead, you'll need to understand the hopes and dreams of people from all walks of life, from all over the world. It will make you a better leader when it is time, your time to rule. T'Challa looked up at his father. His face seemed to be carved from onyx. Every angle sharp at prom prominent. It was a stern face, but one that could easily break into a smile, although it was a rare thing. Fortunately, T'Challa had seen it several times. What about these invaders? he asked. Did you find out more? The king furrowed his brow. I think it may be a man by the name of Ulysses Claw, but I'm not certain. He is a rogue scientist and has always wanted to get out our supply of vibranium. Claw, T'Challa whispered. Where is he from? Is that who the prisoner works for? What will you do with him? The lines on the king's forehead grew deeper. The less you know, the safer you will be for now, T'Challa. T'Challa sank down in his chair. He was always left out of the most, the more interesting stuff in the kingdom. The intrigue and political maneuverings. Why did his father treat him like a child? Now, his father said, steepling his fingers together. Enough talk of troubles. Are you up for a game of chess? One last match? Sure, T'Challa said, sitting up. I choose black.